This is the Free Heal Life Podcast, episode number 99. I'm your host, Josh Madsen, coming at you from the Free Heal Life shop in Salt Lake City, Utah. And there's snow on the mountains, my friends. Winter is here. And uh, Telemark knee dropping is upon us soon enough. So pretty excited here. Shops open. Things are happening. And uh, we're going into week number two. So thanks for all the amazing support as always. Uh, We really appreciate you and stoked that everybody's stoked with us. So newsroom and notes, Wolf Creek kicked off the 21-22 ski season uh, on October 16th. So all you in Colorado, I'm jealous. You guys are out there shredding already and getting it done. I'm sure others will follow. And uh, I'm sure there's probably others that are probably opening and uh by the time of this recording i do not have that privileged information but good for you colorado always getting it getting it going early uh speaking of colorado telemark colorado and those guys are kicking off their 21 uh telemark 2021 i can't talk 2021 telemark film tour in denver with a world premiere of future free heel 2 why not and King of the Lurk. It's going to be at River North Brewery, Blake Street Tap Room. So check that out. Go to telemarkcolorado.com and uh, you can find the dates, times, tickets, all that kind of good stuff. But cool to see some Telemark movies popping up again. And I like the idea that these guys are putting together with a little tour and a couple different movies to get everyone fired up for the season so check that out and uh, we'll have some more news and notes next week but today my guest he works in the outdoor industry as a self-described word nerd and professional chit chatter and this essentially means he's a freelance writer creator storyteller voiceover talent and multimedia producer He's written for the top magazines and dot coms in the outdoors and has done work both in front and behind the camera as talent and producer. Telemark skiers may know him from his article in Ski Magazine in March of 2021 titled, Telemark Skier, Why Are You the Way That You Are? Or his most recent follow-up piece for the same magazine titled, I Made Fun of Telemark Skiing and Then I Actually Tried It. I had a great conversation with him about uh, both of his pieces that he wrote, uh, sort of some of the the blowback that happened, uh, fun of being in the mountains and being in mountain towns, and also what his first knee-dropping experience was like. So please welcome to the podcast, Patty O'Connell. All right, Patty O'Connell, welcome to the Free Hill Life podcast, my friend. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I... I had to at least get the first one out of the way because I used your your full name that entire podcast that I did before. So I figured I I must. I know, <laughs> I know you did. I was like this when guy. I was listen- <laughs> when I was listening to it, I was like, I I feel like I'm in the principal's office back in fourth grade. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, your name was your name was so cool. I'm like, I've I've got to just say Patty O'Connell over and over again. Like this is <laughs> well, this is too good. So no, but I appreciate you coming on, man. This is uh you've uh you're the second Alpine skier to come on the podcast. So we're uh Oh really? We're really making he- well so we're making skis with uh with my buddy Todd and he he came on and he is a uh he's an He's an alpiner, so we uh, we figured there was a good in for him there, but um, I'm psyched you're on because I feel like I feel like our two worlds are sometimes so distant, you know. So I was like, yeah, this would be a, this would be a good conversation. I'm I'm and I'm excited to kind of dig into it a little bit. It'll be fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad to be the um, uh, only you know one of two. Uh, uh, heel clickers, I guess. <laughs> bon- bondage skiers, I think, as we call them. Yeah, now we're going to talk about kinks and stuff. This is going to be great. It's going to get weird real quick. <laughs> awesome. Um, no, that's that's awesome, man. And and honestly, it's I think it's kind of fun because I, I, it, it, I'm hoping that you and I have texted back and forth since that first article you put out. And yeah, yeah. like 
it, it's funny because I, I feel like I've been around this thing long enough that like I, it doesn't it I, I don't know if I wasn't phased the same way like of mm-hmm. course I'm like the telemark guy so like everyone's like sending me yeah. this this that first article you did and I'm just like oh god like here here it is again I'm like <laughs> this just continues to go on and on and yeah. like and and you know a lot of times I think there's kind of this um it, it kind of this rivalry that people have kind of made up in their head you know and some I guess sometimes yeah. oh, it's yeah. true but it's it's kind of funny because you and I are texting back and forth and, and I mean there's like this human element to the whole thing where I'm like this is Patty O'Connell is probably a pretty normal dude even though I call him by his full name you know like yeah. this is, <laughs> but I, I think I'm pretty normal and I think that thing that like rivalry um thing is like well it's completely made up you know it's not an actual real thing and that's where this whole uh you know article came from you know it was it was about the fact that like uh you know skiers kind of love to give one another um you know lovable shit you know this like kind of lovable ribbing um and that's where the article came from you know i was i was in silverton um i was chat with my buddy john who's like the last remaining telly guide there <laughs> uh you know and uh and he showed me his new bindings and he was all psyched on these bindings that he could like click into instead of, you know, like they didn't have the, the cable, um, uh, on him. And I was like, I was like, John, this is like the closest you can get to like, actually like having an Alpine setup you know? <laughs> like, well, while still being able to drop a knee. And like, he laughed and I laughed and we gave each other a bunch of, um, you know, a bunch of kind of like lovable shit as, as skiers do. Uh, and then I was like, oh, hmm, like there's something here, you know, like, let me kind of, uh, um, you know, hook on to this, uh, this like, um, funny exchange that skiers have, um, with one another. And I was kind of shocked that, you know, this farce was taken for, for fact. Yeah. Um, it, it was pretty funny. Like I was like, this guy is getting just destroyed <laughs> i was just like <laughs> yeah because it, it's 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 kind of been funny because i i sort of took the stance years ago that um uh, you know in the i mean if, if you go historically speaking i mean powder mm-hmm. in the early 80s covered telemark skiers and but it was a different time you know like right it telemark skiers have been in those magazines for many many years but yeah, totally. i think at some point you know i kind of took the stance like i'm not even going to pay attention to this because they obviously don't, they're not a telemark magazine. I always kind of looked at it like, mm-hmm. you know, snowboard, snowboarding's in a snowboard magazine and, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. kind of, I kind of went the, the separatist route, if you will, you know, <laughs> like just because yeah. I felt like, I felt like people that did the telemark turn were passionate and I'd rather yeah. get, get away from spending all, all of our time with this rivalry and sort of just talking to the folks that actually like to do it and talk about, you know, progression or things that are going on. And so it's been funny, you know, and I think that you probably saw that telemarks dead article that powder put out kind of towards the end of their, their uh, Uh existence. I mean, and that thing just people just lost their mind over that thing. And right. It's uh yeah. So I think when yours came out, the, the, the rawness of, of sensitivity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I think, I think I touched on what I didn't realize maybe, which was like, uh, some like tease fatigue, you know, yeah, that's uh, a good way to put it. And, and, uh, and, and, you know, I, I, you know, it's regrettable that, um, anybody took it, um, as fact when I was hoping that, you know, I was just going to make people, um, you know, people laugh and, um, you know, I was hoping, if anything, that there would be like a, a response article, like someone p- would pitch a response article, you know, to to uh, Ski Mag, and and uh, you know, there, there would be somebody who was like, you know, uh, alpine skiing is you know bad for your mental health or something like that, you know, like yeah. some kind of like something out there and ridiculous, and that's why you know, I wanted to make sure everything that I was was writing and talking about and when you know in regards to telemark skiing was completely over the top and ridiculous and not based in any fact whatsoever, like skiing in monocles and skiing with dinosaurs and stuff. I wanted to kind of protect the joke, uh, by going completely over the top. And, and some people, um, unfortunately, uh, uh, took that as like actual, 
uh, critique. And I just want to put this out there to the listening public here. <laughs> I do not hate telemark skiing. I don't hate telemark skiers. Uh, I think I think that uh, like all any skier, right? I think you know, like we're all just trying to giggle and uh that ultimately like skiing is kind of like this silly thing you know it's the pursuit for um for a smile and that's what we're we're all trying to get and i really dig that i was just trying to get at that kind of like lovable um shit talk that we do to one another and because i don't really think that there's like different factions of like snow sliders and anybody who's like no this is like the 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 telly camp and the the alpine camp and the like uh, s- snow biker camp over here and the snowboarders over here. It's like, no, man, we're all just trying to smile different ways going downhill. Like anybody who is really like screaming from the lift at people while they're like dropping a knee or, uh, you know, dragging knuckles or whatever. It's like, dude, you, you're like, this, you're missing the whole point here. <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, and it's, it's interesting. Cause I think, yeah, you're, you're riding at a time where there's, like you said, there's kind of this fatigue, you know, because yeah. there's, well, there's, there's been this long standing idea, I think in the telemark community from, from, I mean, that's obviously my opinion, but people would, they, they kind of looked at powder magazine, skiing magazine, which obviously don't even exist anymore or yeah, yeah skis the only one left. So, yeah. Um, but it was kind of like, uh, I think the telemark community kind of always hopes there's kind of this thing in the back of their mind where if you guys cover telemark skiing in a good way that you've somehow embraced our culture and somehow the, the larger Alpine community like manufacturers especially are somehow going to jump in the game and kind of like save telemark or something, which is Mm. really obscure and weird to me because we have a pretty flourishing uh, industry of our own, but it's like, it's, it, it makes, it makes sense that it doesn't get covered in an Alpine ski magazine or a snowboard yeah. magazine, you know? Um, and, and that's always been kind of my approach. I'm like, you know, I realized that years ago and, you know, as, as those companies got larger and were owned by massive corporations, I mean, basically you're, you're not going to get a lot of play and the play you are going to get is probably semi uneducated, which was, which was kind of funny because your piece was so over the top that like that was why I kind of did that like kind of response podcast because I yeah the dinosaur thing (laughs) the way you were describing the guy on the bypass road I was like this doesn't even make sense I'm like this is like it just seemed it seemed funny and I I I wasn't quite sure kind of what the impetus of it was but that that makes sense because it was it was so over the top and kind of all over the place of like um, standard telly jokes built into kind of this satirical piece. So, well, yeah, and that was the whole, you know, the whole point. And I will be the first to admit, like, I don't know jack shit about telemark skiing. I don't know anything right. about it. Uh, and, um, you know, like even making fun of myself in the piece for not knowing anything about it, never actually even trying it, you know, like again, I was trying to, with these things, I was trying to like insulate that, that kind of goofy humor. But I see, you know, I get what you're saying about this thing that I think that, you know, everybody wants to uh, feel good about the choices that they've made. Right. <laughs> and so, and so like when someone's like, Hey, you made a bad choice or that's how they're inferring it. Someone's going to be like, don't tell me I made a bad choice. Tell Mark is great. And you suck. And I was like, Whoa, wait, I'm just, Hey man, weren't we like, eating nachos and like hanging out and having a good time talking about skiing and just bullshitting. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, you know, it's like, it's like I, I grew up in Chicago. I love the Chicago bears, even though they make my head and my heart and my emotional state very unstable. Uh, <laughs> you know, like I don't actually despise people from green Bay, but I will tell my family that I would rather like push my car through green bay than like stop at a gas station because the town (laughs) because the town owns you know uh the team therefore my money at the gas station would go to the green bay packers like i'm not like being realistic when i say these things the same with the telemark uh article you know like i don't actually like my buddy john in silverton i don't hate him my buddies that i you know uh that helped birth my ski passion who dropped knees and in Telluride and Durango, like I love these human beings. Um, but ever since I started skiing at 23, there's always been this thing of like, 
you know, it's just like any other sport, right? You just kind of give people lovable shit and then you go do the thing and you smile and then you eat like a bratwurst afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no, together. No, totally. And, and, uh, you know, I thought it was, um, I was kind of like, honestly, like shocked that some people, uh, got so up in arms about it. And then also very shocked that people like tracked me down on social media <laughs> and uh, some of the things that they said i was like this is like i honestly want to call you up and ask like if you are okay <laughs> and if you need to like if you need to if you need me to find you to give you a hug like do you need like should i call me by your dad's name and i will tell you that you are worthy and that i love you <laughs> you know and you are you are okay and your life choices are oh. good you know because like maybe something else is going on here <laughs> maybe i maybe i hit a nerve <laughs> Uh, that was connected to something else. You, but, got, uh, you got like radical hippies tracking you down that are violent, oh, and trying oh to God. find you. <laughs> yeah, they were. Oh, and they were going after. They were going after my mom and my my gal and stuff. It was just like I seriously. Was like, oh my God. Oh yeah, they were saying. Um, uh, oh, just very inappropriate things about about Jesus. me and, and yeah. So I was like, oh man, like this is. I was bummed, honestly. Like, I mean, you know. Uh, you can't really wrap your head like rationally around somebody who is going to be like an internet troll, you know, and I'm, you know, whatever that's going to happen. Um, but I was like bummed that something that I wrote in jest was taken for a fact. And, you know, uh, I was also kind of like, I mean, everything that I write about, you know, my main objective is like, I want to create some humor and I want to create some thought. Um, and I was pretty bummed that like this, you know, I wish that like that type of reactive energy was spent directed at like the more serious things that I've written about or created podcasts about, um, you know, like the real big problems in our world and in our ski community, like climate change and, um, alcoholism and drug addiction and like mental health, the suicide rates in mountain towns all the forms of discrimination that are like, you know, destroying our ski community. I wish that type of reactive um, energy to this hilarious, ridiculous over the top article was like um, directed at those serious things. That was, that was kind of a bummer to be like, man, you know, like people are all up in arms about like me saying, you know, telly skiers ski, like skied at one time with dinosaurs, you know, it's like, why aren't we talking about like the, the heavy shit? Yeah. So, Man, that bums yeah. me out too. I, I, I mean, I knew you, you took some flack for it, but I didn't realize like that. That's so bizarre because I agree. Like whatever, whatever energy people do have in their free time, like it's like you know, try to put it into something positive, you know. And kind of going back to my thing too is even if it was like this malicious article, which it wasn't, it's like you know, redirect that into like building Telemark better. That's why I'm always like so blown away. I'm like, well. If you don't, it, even if it was a serious article, which mm. we've established that it's not, but it's like, in no way, if it got you fired up, yeah. it's like redirect that into making that community better, you know? And that's what I, you yeah. know, what I'm always trying to tell people is like, you know, foster our own small businesses, you know, like get a rental fleet, you know, um, you know, do something to get people out on it, but don't, you know, it's like if someone's like telemark's dead and you just spend all your time trolling and being upset about it and you do nothing, it's sort of like that, that is sort of the apathetic attitude. I think people have about a lot of stuff and it's just like, you know, come on, like redirect here a little bit. And you know, it's, it's cool if you get fired up about stuff, but yeah, don't go, don't go, don't go attacking people and their families was, on Instagram, was, you know, yeah, that's bizarre. It was wild. I was wild. I have never, uh, like really experienced any kind of like internet trolling. <laughs> so that was kind of fun. I was like, this is like, God, I can't imagine what like actual real humans, you know, who like have some kind of like big internet, you know, social media footprint have to deal with on a daily basis. Cause like, this is insane. This is wild. Like people DMing me or like finding, uh, posts that I was tagged in for like, uh, you know, other podcasts or something like that, you know, like, uh, that was, that was kind of, that was kind of wild. And, um, uh, yeah, like, I don't know if like, if they actually read the article or not, because that was one of the things I was like, did I not like go over the top enough on this thing? You know, like were the jokes not 
ridiculous enough to kind of like pull the rug out from any kind of argument that, you know, like Telly skiing is dead or Telly skiing is less than, you know? Yeah. And that was a bummer. I would hate to think that like, um, anybody felt like othered or like I was putting a wall up because that is not the point of anything I do. Right. Like, um, the, the, the articles I write, the, uh, any kind of media that I create is about thought and humor and, and, you know, building community or celebrating the things, um, you know, in, in the outdoor culture and ski culture that, that I love, or, you know, lovingly poking fun at the ridiculous nature of it all, you know? Uh, and typically what I do is make fun of myself, <laughs> you know, cause I am a, you know, I'm a participant in this thing and, and I love it. Uh, but I also recognize that like, you know, the outdoor culture, the ski culture, like it's very absurd and hilarious to me because skiing is absurd and hilarious to me, you know, because, you know, we're not curing cancer here. We're, we're sliding downhill, you know, and that doesn't mean that it's not like soul enriching and it hasn't led to these wonderful realizations about my life. But at the end of the day, right, like two planks on your feet, like it's a giggle delivery system. <laughs> <laughs> for, for sure. Well, and I'm, I'm so take take me back a little because I think one of the interesting things I've caught, you know, texting with you a little bit, and then you know you brought it up like you didn't even start skiing until you were in your 20s, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I grew up in Chicago. Uh, I was one of four kids, um, and you know, skiing is expensive, and my parents weren't skiers, so it wasn't really like in our wheelhouse, like um, you know, financially or or even really thought about. Like my dad grew up outside of Chicago in a small town. And he went to Colorado state and skied like maybe a handful of times when he could afford it when he was uh, in college, but it just wasn't thought of. And so right after um, school, when I graduated, uh, I was working as a teacher's aide outside of Chicago and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. I took a, a springtime trip to Telluride, uh, like a three day trip to go uh, visit a buddy of mine who uh, right after graduation, moved out there and, and started driving cats for the mountain. And um, me and my buddy Scott visited Adam. And uh, on those, those three days changed the course of my life because I was immediately inspired. I was like, this is perfect for what I'm looking for, right? And I'm, uh, I'm 23. Uh, you know, I want to assert my manhood, but also continue to play cops and robbers, you know, as a young 20 something does. And, uh, um, you know, living in a mountain town is like perfect for that. I've been an athlete my whole life. I was looking for the next thing and skiing was the next like really wonderful challenge, but it also had this great sense of community. And of course, you know, the mountains are kick-ass. The San Juans still are my favorite mountain range. And, uh, and after that three day trip, I moved to Telluride that following October and started making snow, learned how to ski. Uh, and, um, and then spent, you know, what I thought was going to be six months, but turned into almost seven years ski bombing in Telluride and working every mountain job you could possibly think of, you know, and it just, I mean, it changed the course of my life that, that trip, you know, is, is the reason I'm sitting here talking to you today. Wow. That's cool, man. Yeah. yeah Cause I'm, yeah. I mean, I think it is the, the things you say you, you focus on in your writing. I mean, and, and that's, that's why I wanted to get you on here because it, I mean, obviously we focus on telemark scheme, but I think the commonalities of, you know, uh, being a ski bum, if that's the route you go, or, you know, even if you're just visiting a mountain town for the first time and you're from the Midwest and you've never seen anything like that. I mean, it, you know, th those commonalities I think are across the board, right? Like it's like people just, yeah. you, you're, you have these opportunities to see a different way of life and, um, and then it just, um, <laughs> I think that's what's funny about people that end up in the ski industry, at least for a portion of their life. It's like you kind of you, you can get caught in this whirlwind of opportunities if you're just willing to kind of stick around or be in the right town. And uh, right. yeah. and uh, and obviously, I mean, teachers aid and now you're writing for all these outdoor you know blogs and podcasts and stuff like that. I mean, how did I mean? Obviously, you started snowmaking. So how did yeah. you, how did you end up in the writing realm? You know just being well, there you know, like yeah like most things in my life i you know i stumbled into it <laughs> i kind of was like wait i'm doing what now uh so uh at 29 years old um i uh i moved from telluride to st paul minnesota to get sober 
Um, and after, uh, you know, getting out of, uh, uh, rehab and, uh, living in a, um, you know, sober house for like 16, 15 months. Um, during that time I, I went from like, right after rehab, I was like a handyman, you know, I was working on like a paint crew. I was doing like, you know, kind of like the ski bum, uh, do any job to make a little bit of cash deal. And then I, I got a job working for the house.com. And I was like their ski marketing manager. They, they were like a snowboard shop. Uh, I think they were like the first, the first folks to put snowboards online to sell or something like that oh, back wow. when, yeah, back when Al Gore invented the internet or whatever. <laughs> you know? And, uh, um, uh, and they needed like a ski presence. And, and so, um, you know, I kind of like literally I sat at a coffee shop, you know, cause I was either going to like start plowing snow or I thought I was just going to like go, uh, you know, uh, crank dins at a, at a ski shop somewhere. So I, I literally asked Siri on my iPhone. I was like, give me the name of a ski shop. And I had like six pop up in the St. Paul area. And I called the house and I got, for whatever reason, I got put through to the president and they were like, yeah, we're looking for somebody who can write and be on camera uh, and talk about skiing. Do you want to do that? And I was like, well, I'm an Irishman from Chicago. I love to talk. Uh, I studied English literature in college so I can write. And I love skiing more than anything in life. I'm your guy. And and then after working for them for, you know, like a, a year or so, year and a half, um, I went, I was like, you know, all I want to do is tell stories. I don't want to look at like marketing spreadsheets anymore. Um, and uh, after like a year and a half of working with them, I had a few connections at like, tgrs.com and um uh like the gear junkie which is another minnesota uh, uh based company that you know writes about gear and these folks just gave me a shot at writing when i really didn't um didn't have a lot of work you know like didn't have a lot of bylines slowly but surely i worked up a little bit of um you know uh um, material underneath my belt and uh, and then I applied for a job at skiing magazine. I was, uh, the associate editor there moved back to Colorado, uh, and then working for them for a little while and went full-time freelance in like 2016. And since 2016, every single stage has been like, you know, me asking folks to help. And, and a lot of people in the industry saying like, yeah, okay, you can, you've got some talent. Let, let's help refine you a little bit. Um, you know, let, uh, uh, and we're going to give you a shot. I mean, it's much like, you know, the, the, the kind of media world in the ski industry and the outdoor industry is just like the community who's actually out in the mountains. Right. It's like, I'm new to town. Help me. I don't know what I'm doing. And, and it's like, here, come under my wing and I will, I will show you how to turn. (laughs) I will show you, uh, I will show you that like mountain biking doesn't have to feel soul crushing you know, all the time. Like there's some fun parts to it, like skinning. Yes, that's terrible. But the, the downhill is really fun. So you should do that part. You know, it's like, they just people from when I moved to Telluride at 23 uh, uh, until today, right. Everybody uh, that I've met has really just been like, I'm going to help you out, you know? And and that's the thing I love about our, our community. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, I want to create things and write things and, uh, record things that make people laugh and smile. Cause that's been my experience. You wow. Know? That's cool, man. Well, that's, that's, yeah. a, that's a rad story. And, and Thanks. it's, uh, no, and I agree. Like, I think, and that's, I think that it's interesting to look at, we always talk about the telemark community being so helpful. <laughs> like you see someone on the mountain. So it's, yeah. it's interesting that I get this is this is me shouting out to the the people listening like be be nice to each other for God's sake Jesus you know yeah. it's like um because I think that is like you know the larger outdoor community I mean getting into it people are going to help you um and and you taking such an interesting path too like it's it's always fun for me to hear how people ended up doing what they're doing cuz a lot of times it's not like this straight line you know A to Z and and uh that would be so boring if it was, you know? Yeah. Well, <laughs> like, and, oh, I got out of college and then I was successful. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like, that's not that fun to yeah, listen to. No. And I'm sure you have, I mean, I'm sure you have countless stories that, you know, kind of intertwine with each other and people you oh, met, yeah. met somewhere and, 
you get work out of it. And, and you're in an interesting line of work. I mean, uh, one thing I wanted to ask you was with all, with a lot of the, the ski magazines, like the printed editions going mm-hmm. away. I mean, is there less work or more work for people that are freelancing right now? Um, you know, I, uh, I can't speak to anyone else's experience. Um, I hate seeing any magazine, um, have to shutter and the pandemic has had like some really, um, drastic impacts on the ski industry and the outdoor industry and, on, on, you know, our entire country, you know, in terms of the economics, um, I, I am experiencing like, um, you know, uh, uh, after basically everything was turned off, you know, every contract I had in March of 2020 just disappeared. And I was just kind of like, well, what am I going to, I guess I'm going back to like running a shovel. (laughs) Once (laughs) once that turns back on, I can always do that, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, but, but the industry, once the industry turned back on, you know, there's still work out there to be had. And, and luckily I think for me at an early stage of, you know, my, uh, writing career, it became very clear to me that, um, the role of like, just being a ski writer doesn't really exist anymore. Maybe it existed in the eighties and the nineties when, when skiing had, you know, arguably its largest boom of popularity, uh, worldwide. Um, maybe that existed then, but I don't think it exists now. And, um, you know, luckily I'm interested in all things outdoors and things outside of the outdoor industry. So I've been able to, um, with a lot of help carve out, uh, an interesting and fun career path where basically if I have an idea about something, um, I can find a home for it, which I feel very lucky, uh, and grateful for. Yeah, that's, that's cool. That's, that's interesting to hear you say that too, because I think, yeah, the evolution of it's probably changed. Like you can't necessarily, only write for one outlet like you're only writing for ski magazine or skiing magazine right. or something like that and, yeah. and and you know it sounds like you're doing everything from podcasting to you know I've, I've seen some of your videos um i think are the was there a video series on outside is that what i'm i'm trying to think where i saw I, there was a series of some stuff that i caught and i'm not sure if it was like a consistent thing or or not but i mean where 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 are you mostly putting your content these days are you just kind of bouncing around or are there a couple steadfast gigs that you've got well uh ski mag uh and outside have been um really great for me in the last um you know few years uh so a lot of my stuff goes there uh i did a uh <laughs> kind of coming out of the pandemic i did a four-part uh video series called becoming a nordork Oh, that um, was the one I watched. Dude. Yeah. And so, yeah. So Solomon, <laughs> Solomon, uh, uh, backed that and then, um, REI distributed it on their YouTube channel. And, um, uh, that was really fun. Cause basically it was like, you know, and again, here's, here's this thing, right. I noticed, you know, I was like talking with my gal and we were talking about going into the winter last year when there were still so many, I mean, remember how crazy it was? It's like, are resorts even going to open? Yeah, totally. You know, should we buy? It was the first time ever in my life, you know, since I'm beginning, you know, to ski in my early 20s. And I was like, are we going to buy ski passes this year? Like, is that a bad idea? Is the backcountry going to be even, like, safe to go into? Because there's going to be so many more people, you know? Like, what are we going to do? And we were talking back and forth about it. And, and both of us were like, I bet. Nordic skiing explodes just like fly fishing and trail running and mountain biking did. I mean, that summer of 2020, like you couldn't buy like a bike pump, like, you know, like you, there was just no inventory anywhere. And we were like, I bet that's going to have a Nordic skiing. And I was like, Hmm, here's an idea. I've never Nordic skied ever before in my life because it's always kind of seemed ridiculous. I've always been like, why would I want to go exercise when I could go smile and go, you know, (laughs) wiggle going downhill. (laughs) Uh, what I want to, you know, I could do jumping jacks instead, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> uh, so, you know, she grew up on a, on a, you know, like a Nordic team, uh, has been a Nordic skier and a, and an avid 
you know, everything outdoors person since she was little. And she was like, oh, I'll be your instructor. And so we did a four part series on, on that. And it was hilarious and ridiculous, you know, cause it's basically just me falling down on those clown shoes. They call Nordic skis <laughs> for four different episodes. Learning your, um, v, your V2 alternate technique. <laughs> I know dude, it's, it is so hard. It's because the funniest thing about Nordic skiing is that like, you go like, Oh my God, this, they're going uphill. I'm just like, my lungs are on fire and I feel like there's a piano on my back. And then you get to the crest, you get to the top and you turn around and you're like, I have to go down this with no edges, these things, <laughs> with no edges with, and with boots that are basically, it's like wearing like, you know, like heads with no laces in them or something. It's like, I'm like, Oh my God, this is so uncomfortable. I've some of the hardest falls I took ever in my life were on Nordic skis. I'm surprised that I'm still not actually on the ground out there right now, just crying myself <laughs> into a puddle. Yeah. That's, that's a, that's a hard sport. I, I, oh my God, I've never so really hard. got it. I've always said I want to get into it, but then I'm kind of like you. I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I want to suffer. It's, then, it, then it snows and you're like, well, you know what would be fun today is like, Face shots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not. I'm not getting up going like. I wonder if the kilometers are groomed well today. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> who put down the spicy track? Right that's what I'm looking for. Oh, yeah. that's funny, yeah. man. So it's 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 things like that where you know, and and that's where this you know telemark uh, article came from, uh, and the follow up article. Right, it's like I noticed something. I, I'm a curious person and I go like a hmm moment and, and then something happens where I'm like, well, I want to create something from this, you know? Uh, and that's, that's the cool part about my job, right? Is as long as there's like little fireworks going off in my brain, um, I've got a job because I can just find a place to, to put it, you know? Um, and, and I don't know like what that's going to look like in six months or a year or 10 years. Uh, but I do know that I'll, you know, be able to continue asking questions and hopefully trying to pro provide some, some funny and poignant answers. Yeah. And that's that it. And it props to you, man, because being a writer, just, just being a writer, even if you're at, at one magazine is hard, but freelancing mm -hmm. on top of that, I mean, that's hard work, man. I mean, that's a, it's a full-time job making sure you got gigs and you've got ideas yeah. flowing and that's pretty cool. You've been able to kind of find a, a route, like you said, where as long as your brain's firing, you can kind of go, huh, I've got this idea. And then people are wanting you to do it. I mean, that's, that's like the best. <laughs> it is. It's I, you know, I pinch myself all the time. Like how have I convinced people that like stories about me farting in sleeping bags and farting in ski boots, <laughs> you know, like they need that. You know, I don't know, but it's just like the cool thing, right? It's like, it's not too dissimilar to, from what I was doing, uh, in my twenties as just like a total dirtbag ski bum in Telluride. Right. I mean, I was doing anything I could to pay rent and make sure I could like, you know, have some Zatarans and some Hillshire farm kielbasa in the fridge. Right. <laughs> it was like, it's like, I, okay. Like I'll, I'll, uh, I'll make snow. And when snowmaking is done, I'll bump chairs. And when, when, you know, uh, I get off the mountain, I can go bar back or bartend or bounce. Uh, I'll, I'll strip logs. Uh, you know, I'll work golf maintenance. I'll work trails. You know, it's just like, I mean, I worked at a, I worked at a, uh, like a fancy lady underpants boutique in Telluride for, <laughs> uh, for a little while, you know, is this I was like a total, I was like 26 or 27. I knew nothing about fancy lacy underpants. And I had like a terrible, impressive, you know, goggle fan. Like who, why would you hire that kid? <laughs> I, I'm guess, I'm guessing, I'm guessing that's where the mustache came into play personally, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm just, I'm it just, helped, I'm it speculating. Helps <laughs> it, helps some stuff. it wasn't quite as, it was pretty patchy back then. It wasn't quite as robust as it is, as it is now, but, but it's, the, it's the same type of career path that I have now. Right. Which is just like, I've got this, like, maybe it's more of like a camouflage ski bum life, but it's still all so I can go skiing and live in the mountains. You know, I'm not like washing dishes anymore. Uh, you know, but I am still on the hustle. And on the grind and just trying to figure out um, how I can how I can live in the place that I love, yeah. um, which is the mountains, you know, and uh, and that's kind of cool. Right. It's the the circumstances are different, but the path is the same. How can I, uh, you know, have some money in the bank, 
have some money in my pocket, uh, you know, pay my bills and go out and, and be in the mountains as much as possible, you know, and that's cool. And I think that's what unites all of us in this weird community of us is that we just want to be in the mountains, man. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> for sure. And, and like the, 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 t- I, what I love about it is it's like you didn't, from at least from the sound of it i mean it's like you never shied away from a you know a job you're you're like i'm you have work okay cool i'll take it you know and you hop in and you just make it work and you patch it together and like you said right one yeah. day you're a dishwasher or you're bar backing or you're selling women's underwear or whatever and then yeah and you know it, those opportunities open up you just got to kind of keep moving and that's that's probably the hard working Irishman in you, man. That's awesome. That's the that's the Midwest and the Irish, you know, coming through. It's like I'm gonna show up on time with a clean shirt and say, uh, yes, ma'am, yes, sir, and uh and I'm just gonna work hard. Yep. You know, I, I do like I I I believe more in my ability to work hard than I do my talent. You know, I, I think I have some talent, I think I have some creativity, uh, but more than anything, I know I'm gonna work my ass off. Uh, and, and I believe in that, you know, uh, and that goes with everything, you know, in, in my life, you know, not just my career. It's like, well, I'm going to try, I'm going to try really freaking hard. So, oh, I love uh, that. yeah, that's awesome. Well, I wanted to, I wanted to touch kind of going back on, um, like the, the follow-up piece. Cause we kind of talked about the first piece that obviously called cause all sorts, sorts of turmoil amongst, uh, my telemark brothers and sisters, <laughs> but yeah. I, I was kind of, yeah. you know, um, Towards, uh, I guess, let's see, I'm looking at it right now. I mean, that just came out, what, like a month ago? In- yeah, I, I, I skied, though. I tried telemark skiing at the end of last season. And then we decided to kind of keep it on the back burner until, because it was the end of the season and, and we were going into summer. So why not, like, uh, fire it back up in, uh, in the fall? And uh, I tried it. I'm one of you now. <laughs> I know I was brushing up on I, the 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 picture was the first thing it got me. I was like, he's very well dressed in a Hawaiian shirt, which uh, I would I would say is a good telemark spring look. Yeah, yeah, it was a great spring day, and I tried to color coordinate as best I could. That's awesome. And also wear the like my my stretchiest pants uh, for the uh, uh, you know for the for the bendery that I was about to uh, to experience. Yeah, what what was it like getting into? Uh, that's I mean, I was kind of read. I mean, it talks about it in the article, and I'll, I'll I'll put a link to it in the in the show notes. But t- tell me what it was because it, it's funny because we texted after the first article, and yeah. you said you were going to go out, and it's it's kind of fun to see that you actually did it. And and um, I think I I think I had told the the boys at the shop I was like I I invited you out here. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, yeah. he must announce himself if he comes through the door, you know, <laughs> yeah, I am Patty gonna, O'Connell. <laughs> I'm going to kick down the door. So I am Patty O'Connell. <laughs> I've come here to drop knees. Uh, yeah. but, I, I got to tell you, man, um, it was it was really fun um, in so much that like, you know, it was a total beginner beatdown. I mean, like that was the end of the season. I ski a lot. I felt like my legs were, you know, it's like end of the season, right? We're all like, oh, I can crush a watermelon between my legs. I, I have smoothie making quads right now. And it was like 15 minutes into telemarketing. And I was like, I'm, I'm, I need a Gatorade and a hug right now. I am absolutely <laughs> crushed. Someone get me an ice bath and someone call my mom so she can tell me that I'm a, I'm a pretty, pretty boy or something like that, you know, because I mean, I knew I was in trouble when, uh, you know, I stepped into one ski and I like flipped up the, uh, the binder and I was like, okay, I got it. And then I tried to step into the other one and I was like, Hannah, you know, my friend, Hannah, who, who is a, uh, an avid, uh, uh, genuflector. Um, you know, I was like, Hannah, you got, you got to help me here. I don't think I can do this. <laughs> she was like, she was like crawling in between my legs when we were, you know, it's like, which way's righty tighty, which way's lefty Lucy. Oh God, how am I going to do this? And, and I knew I was like, I knew I was in trouble then. Um, I, the first thing I tried to figure out was a pizza. <laughs> was that's like, a good place. That's like, a good place to yeah, start. Yeah. And I mean, just getting to the lift, was a was a remarkable experience because you know having never 
had that experience before of like your heel actually lifting off the ski. I was like, I'm going to, my teeth are going to end up on my tips in about 13 seconds here. Like I am terrified. Um, it, but it was really fun. It was, it was really fun. And the most thinking that I've ever done on a pair of skis, I think in my entire life. Yeah. That, I noticed, I noticed you mentioned that in the piece cause it's, uh, it, it's interesting, right? Like there's so much more going on than making a, what we call a P turn, a parallel turn, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's great. I'm going to call that. It's, uh, I'm going to start using that. It's, it's interesting because, it, I mean, yeah, it is. It's a lot more dynamic. I mean, and it's funny. I, I was looking at your setup. That was the first thing I looked at was like what setup you got put on, which looks, it, it's a it's a solid setup, but it, it's still a cable binding, which is funny. Yeah. You, you described getting into that second ski, which is like for anybody that, has used a cable binding that's funny that you experience that because that's like the you know are you stepping over your ski with your other ski so your ski doesn't slide down the hill there's no brakes you know like um even that getting you know getting into it portion is is challenging and then you know obviously the turn has a lot of dynamic to it and uh luckily you had someone showing you (laughs) yeah i mean luckily hannah was there um and and it just i mean it made you know, I went to, uh, uh, you know, I went to a resort here, uh, just up the Valley and we went to like some mellow terrain and I mean, it was like the green runs where it was like, you know, skiing something that was like the most, you know, double EX black diamond ever, you know, it was like any little riffle or bump. I was like, Oh God, you know, and, uh, there's just a lot going on. And, and, um, the, the amount of thinking that I had to do in, in a sport where I usually is just, I love it because it's like, Oh, I just get to turn my brain off. You know, like that was a new experience and something that I hadn't like felt in, in years, you know, on a, on a pair of skis. Like I've done plenty of things where I'm getting the be- beginner beat down. Uh, but I haven't experienced that on skis in a long time. So that was a pretty fun, funny experience. And, you know, ultimately it was like, man, I just smiled a lot and um you know said oh my god a lot you know when i was like thought i was going over the handlebars and jesus mary mother of god is there nothing more terrifying than catching the uh inside edge of your uphill ski on a pair of tallies jesus I, holy i hell. saw you wrote about that too and i was thinking uh, you also mentioned the ball of your foot pressure and i was like oh yeah i know what's going on there because it's it's different right like you're actually pressuring that up like if you don't pressure correctly and you don't angulate the right way that you can literally catch your inside edge of the uphill ski and get get thrown you know or tweak your knee or whatever yeah and i'm just like oh my god this is how it happens this is how i this is how my legs turn into pretzels or something like that and you know i've got like hannah like okay do this now do this and i'm just like oh there's so much going on (laughs) it's just like there's there's what and while my gal is like taking pictures and you know she's like you know be more athletic and i'm like stop stop yelling at me just like what am i supposed to do right now and it was just it was a hilarious experience, you know, it really was. And, you know, um, I'm glad I did it. Cause now, uh, no one can yell at me yeah. for, not, for not being a tele skier. I'm one of you now. I'm going to show up in the next convention. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm going to, I'm going to just, I got to do all the things now I'm coming for you. You're signed up, sell, signed up for telemark con and you're going to show up in your, in <laughs> your, your knickers and your wool sweater <laughs> yeah. ready to go. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look like uh, some photo out of 1923. Uh, it's gonna be amazing. I'm, <laughs> I'm. I'm in it now. I'm part of you. It's, you can't get rid of me now. No, that's that's <laughs> awesome. Well, and I, and I'm curious too because one one thing I th- I thought of with the articles and then you try it. It's I think that's an interesting part to kind of the piece of people's perception of it and i'm kind of curious like from yeah i mean you're you're obviously more in the alpine world than than the telemark world even though you tried it but like why i guess the funny thing is um there's kind of this i always say like people think we're on the same evolutionary plane as an alpine skier meaning meaning like somehow we got i mean you kind of alluded to the dinosaur thing which it's it's so i think i actually talked about this same thing now that i'm thinking about it but it's like it's almost like alpine skiers look at it and they think, "Oh, my, that's that's really sad." Like you guys, you guys like are still Cro-Magnon men, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you haven't your brains haven't fully formed yet and you yeah. haven't found you haven't found yeah. fire you know or something like that <laughs> and, and so it's like i i'm just why do you I, why do you think that exists? I mean, it, now that you've tried it, I mean, th- and I agree with you, there's a lot more going on, you know, like, yeah. you know, being a, being a telemark skier, it, I always say it's a personality choice, which is kind of oh, what yeah. I, I default to. Cause I'm like, yeah, certain people look at, look at it and they're like, that's dumb. Like, why would I do that? And I'm always like, yeah, you're probably not going to do this ever. <laughs> right. Yeah. But, but yeah, from your perspective, like why do you think that is? Cause it didn't always used to be that way. That's what's kind of funny is there was kind of like, you know, in the nineties, like especially late nineties, early two thousands, mm-hmm. there was kind of this weird. And I think this is probably why you caught flack for it. Cause there was kind of this era where like, there was like a respect for it. And mm-hmm. now, now I, I, a lot of it has to do with AT bindings coming out, I think, because yeah. people think, yeah. you know, why would you use these anymore to hike uphill? But funny enough like telemark's growing in bounds more than it is out of bounds so right i'm just curious like what your take would be like you know you're you're you know writing for ski magazines and stuff like what why why does that perception exist i'm just i don't know (laughs) i don't know if i can answer that question because i think i mean maybe it has something to do with like yeah um you know when when there wasn't at setups and and you know telemark skiing was like the only real way to access the backcountry, right? The telemark skier was like the Billy badass yep. of of the mountain down, right? Like I, you guys, you know, what are you, a resort skier? Like I'm going to the far off distant lands of powder <laughs> fields. And, stuff. and now with AT bindings, it's like, well, I can do that too. You're just doing it like in a harder way or, or a way that appeals to you more than like the Alpine setup, right? Or I'm doing it in this easier way. I, I'm like on the cutting edge or something. I'm not really sure. And again, it's like, I don't like, I don't really give much, uh, uh, credence to, you know, like anybody who's actually on this like fence line of like, you know, Alpine skiing better, tele skiing bad, you know, I just was trying to tap into like the funny, like, you know, kind of, uh, communal shit talk <laughs> that we all have about, you know, anything right from, snowblading to ski biking to tele skiing to snowboarding to alpine skiing like whatever i'm not really sure uh like if if people like really look down on it I mean, you know like when i when i first saw that you uh you know created the the podcast where you were reading the article and i saw that you have like telemark tattooed on your knuckles i was like oh shit this guy's gonna <laughs> like this guy this guy takes this shit like super see he loves telemark he's gonna rip me a new one and then when you were like no this is a funny thing i get it i'm gonna call him patty o'connell the entire time make him feel like he's in a principal's office like this is hilarious to me i laughed so hard i was like that's the thing i love about our community is that we're just gonna laugh through this like you know ridiculous thing that is skiing uh and so you know i i don't think i can i can answer that question i'm I'm not trying to dodge it i just not i'm not really sure because i you know like i don't i don't hate tele skiing i love how you uh you know your your uh your kind of slogan of protector of the turn right and that's something i can really appreciate is like the love of a single turn and that's you know that's um that's something that I totally understand because when I moved uh, to uh, Minnesota, you know, I wasn't not going to ski, but going from Telluride, which was the only place I had ever skied at that point uh, to St. Paul, Minnesota, where you're skiing 200 foot Hills, you know, I had asked myself, you know, it's like, what do I really love about skiing? And I figured out it was this one specific turn. And I tried to bang the right footed slarb on every little side <laughs> hit I could possibly find on these icy 200 foot hills. And any day that I could do just at least one of those days when I was in Minnesota was so friggin' amazing. And still to this day, that one turn I love. And if I can do that on any day that I go out skiing, I'm pumped on it, you know? And I love that. And so that's something that I think like really unites the 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 any form of skiing right is like down to like the minutia it's like man that moment in the meat of the turn you know when you're fully connected to what your body is doing with nature you know with the weather with the terrain everything and then you're also fully like 
disconnected in that, you know, uh, that zone that we all wish we could live for, you know, or, or that we all live for and wish we could live in forever. It's like, that's what connects us. That shit right there, that little moment, you know, and I totally get that, you know, no, like, that... I, I totally respect how you're like, yeah, I never experienced that on Alpine skis. I only experience it when I'm dropping knees and lunging my way downhill. Yeah. I get that. Yeah, no, that's, that's cool that it, and that you nailed it. I mean, the way you talk about this slurve turn and you put all this time into it. I mean, that's, I mean, that's why telemarkers are telemarkers. I think the, the way people get to it, like I said, it's, it, it's a total personality choice, you know, in terms yeah. of like, yeah. it's, it's like someone looking at a CrossFit gym and thinking it's a good idea. You know, you're, <laughs> you're like, that yeah. looks terrible. And for yeah. a, the average person, it is terrible, you know, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. You know, some people, they get into it and, you know, they, they just hulk out and they're lifting concrete balls and tires and <laughs> they're, they're into it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. um, yeah. but that, and that's, it's, it's, it's interesting that you brought up, I don't know, where, where were you skiing like Afton or like Lutzen or something like that when you were back uh, in the Midwest? I was skiing, uh, Afton, I lived like 20 minutes away from Afton Alps and I was, I did some work with wild mountain. So I skied there and then Lutzen was the first place I skied in the Midwest where I didn't hear my turn. So I love that place. <laughs> uh, that was, I was like, Oh my God, snow, like snow, snow. This is great. You know? And then, uh, it fully exploded for me when I, um, visited Mount Bohemia, which I had heard about when I was living in Telluride from all these like Minnesota, Wisconsin guys that I worked with. They were like, Oh, Mount Bohemia is the shit. I was like, yeah, okay. Michigan, like, come on. Telluride's the shit, you know? Yeah. And, and then I actually went to Mount Bohemia and I was like, Oh my God, it's like blower overhead. Like they have a 40 foot snow stake to like measure the snow, yeah. you know, like they've got mailboxes on 40 foot, like tall pipes, you know, so that the mailman can get to it in the middle of winter at a, on a snowmobile I mean, that place nuke snow and that was like where the first like um face shot i'd gotten you know was like there i was like oh my god you know wow. and uh yeah so it's like i mean yeah it was you got everyone every single skier has got to ski uh mount bohemia yeah big and shout out to lonnie and also a telemark skier Joey Wallace. Oh, it, it oh like, I know Joey. Dude, he, that dude, <laughs> that dude reps telling and Midwest skiing specifically, uh, you know, Mount Bohemia harder than maybe any human being has ever repped anything in life. <laughs> for sure. And it, that video series that he put together is, is pretty cool for people that <laughs> oh haven't, God, for yeah. people that haven't seen those. I mean, I, and, and that, you know, it's funny. Cause like, I think everything you're hitting on, it's kind of like, um, you know, people are always like, Oh, where's your favorite place to ski? And honestly, I always blank because I think about where, where I'm at. And I think I probably gravitate yeah. more to, to the, the people and the culture yeah. that's unique yeah. to the mountain. And I think that's kind of, you know, if, if you're just like, Oh, this is 200 vert, I'm going to have a terrible day or it's icy. Right. Um, you know, you're not going to have a lot of fun, but it, I, I always feel like the culture surrounding the mountains way more interesting. Like the UP is a great example of that. I mean, there are some characters up there and, and it, it's Die not hard skiers. Yeah. Die and, it, hard. and it's not easy to get there. I mean, it's no. like, it's rough and it's, you know, it's bad weather. And, and I've got a tick list of weird resort. You know, I'm, I'm the guy that's always kind of like you, like, asking siri like is there skiing in alabama yeah. you know like <laughs> yeah you know because yeah, totally. i, I want to see it i want to go ski in blue jeans and just be like yep i'm i'm here i'm doing it and just say that and, i did it you know yeah and that's like that's like uh, another great thing about our community right it's like everybody gets the why you would move to telluride or or you know the salt lake area and ski the wasatch right i mean you just you look at the mountains you're like well duh but it's like who's who's the human who's like no, I'm not leaving Iowa. This is the best skiing on the planet, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know? But there are people who do that, which is awesome. It's totally kick-ass, you know? And that's something that I love about it, right? It's like, like you said, like, where's your favorite place to ski? It's like, okay, well, for me, it'd be like, uh, let's see, Mount Bohemia, right? 
uh, Telluride for sure. And then, you know, my number one place is probably the place I'm skiing on that day. <laughs> yeah, right. No, that's I'm I'm the same way because I, I I think everybody, especially when you're young, you're like, is it you know what's the vert? You know, like yeah. is there, how steep is it? What's the gnar factor, bro? Yeah, and it, at some point, I think that just I don't know, it just kind of dissipates, you know. And I that's what I was going to mention with the Midwest. What's I mean, there's a huge, huge telemark community there, and I think a lot of people. We always say it's like people kind of get bored of that same icy turn you know, yeah. on 200 vert. And there's yeah. like this thriving community of people that are like, you know, just like you focused in on like, Hey, I'm going to have a good time here, but you focused on the details and focused on how you could find that perfect turn. And, uh, you know, we see that a lot too. So it may, it makes sense why, you know, people get into telly or, or, you know, like, I think that's why park scheme blew up in the Midwest too. You know, like kids were bored and then you're like, all right, here's a bunch of metal and we're going to throw it in the middle of the mountain. I know. Oh, it's insane. The park, that was one of the things that really blew my mind when I lived in, in the Midwest and when I lived in St. Paul and, uh, as a skier, I was like, oh my God, like the park scene here is so incredible. The urban scene is so incredible. And like, you know, I mean, the the LPHs, the laps per hour that you can get on a tow rope and you can hit the same rail 900 times in an hour and a half. <laughs> there's no, you know, there's no uh, doubt in my mind why some of the best park skiers, you know, grew up in the Minnesota, like Wisconsin, like, you know, Midwest ski uh, scene, you know, because they just rep that thing so hard all day long. It's just, and that's the thing that I love about the entire ski community, right? It's like you find your thing and you just love that thing forever and always as hard as possible. It's really cool, you know? And, and, you know, that's why, that's why I think like any kind of form of skiing is really cool. Cause you find your thing and you're just like, Oh my God, I have fallen in love with this thing so hard. And it's going to be one of the chief motivators in the decisions that I make for the rest of my life. You know, it's like, it's why I have my job. It's, it's why where I live, where I, I live. It's, it's why I have the kind of dog that I have or, the, you know, one of the like chief things that like my gal and I do together, spend time in the mountains. My favorite thing that we do in the mountains is go ski. Yeah. <laughs> like It's, it's the best. It is absolutely the best. Yeah. I love that, man. And I, I think, uh, this has been a really cool conversation just, you know, to, um, like connect on the com the common things rather than the, the, the differences, you know, like I, I think, uh, I mean, I've just had fun talking to you, man. It's like, you know, I, like it, it, you just connect with people and, and I think yeah. people that have lived similar lives and understand, you know, what we're talking about, you know, living in the mountains, enjoying yeah. time together, meeting cool, funky people, you know, like Joey Wallace at Mount Bohemia, you know, I mean, yeah. and, and that's even cool. Like we, I didn't know you knew Joey, you know, like oh, yeah. even oh, that's, yeah. even that's cool. You know, just the fact that we kind of know the same people and I met, I met Joey in Italy you know, like, and then here you yeah, met him. Really? And, yeah. So it's like, <laughs> I just think about how cool and, and for how many of us are out there doing different stuff. I mean, we're all very much the same. And, and, uh, and I think it was, uh, it's, it's just, it's good to talk to you. And I, th I hope people, um, I hope it humanizes the articles a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, I hope you know. I hope, I hope people check out uh, you know the uh, the follow up and 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 slide into my DMs with like you know I really appreciate that. I appreciate you instead of like you know eat shit and die. Bro, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so yeah. too, man. I'm like yeah. I'm like trying to think like I hope uh, I hope we're representing this thing a little bit better. <laughs> Instead of like put, putting a hit on Patty O'Connell and like I know yeah the most hated man in all of Telemark skiing you know oh my but now God. but now guess what Tally Markers I am one of you I know I am one of you you can't get rid of me now uh, and just and for the record once again I love Telliers I do I love all forms of snow sliding. We do. I love you guys. You can't get rid of me. Well, thanks for coming on, man. I hope uh, I hope next time you're in Salt Lake um, or I'm out. In, are, you're in Colorado now again? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm in I'm in the Roaring Fork Valley, just uh, outside of Ooh, Aspen, good spot. and I spend uh, a, a great amount of time in, in Salt Lake because um, uh, my gal grew up there, and uh, her parents are still there, and um, 
um, I we just you know today is one week since we got engaged. So oh, congratulations! Uh, That's uh, awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was awesome. It's really it's it's I'm flying high, uh, and so yeah, I'll be in Salt Lake, and um, well, you should definitely make some wiggles. I don't know if it every time I come to Salt Lake, it nukes snow. And so I don't know if I'm going to give up one of those days to bend knees with you, but maybe on a spring day, uh, you can take me to a magic carpet and teach me some stuff. But no, next time I'm there and it nukes, uh, we should definitely make some wiggles together. Yeah. And you, you always know people getting into telly, if they're going to go hard, they, they do it on the pow days and the other guys wait until it's not a good day. <laughs> yeah. well, no, It's like, I, uh, will maybe falling down in, in, uh, you know, in, in waste deep powder on tellies, uh, would make it a little easier, but I'm just thinking of that turn and adding that much snow. It's just like, Oh God, I don't know, man. That's, I, <laughs> and see, that's, that is the, that's the hiccup with telemark is the best turn in powder. In my opinion is that turn, but the learning curve to get to the point where you <laughs> yeah, do it. Dude. I mean, that's, that's uh, honestly, that's, that's what we always say at the, at the retail shop. It's like when it's a, when it's a good year, you only see the telemark skiers. And when it's a bad year, you see all the people that don't telemark cause they're looking for something else to do. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. uh, well, well maybe this will lead to you and I becoming like avid snow bikers. Oh, so you never know. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a possibility. Um, <laughs> I'll melt. I'll melt your brain with uh with one last thing. Is there's actually a telly board? Look it up. And a uh, telly board. Two telemark bindings on a mono type ski. <laughs> what? In the shit? what? Yeah. Oh. I just I I wanted to leave you with that little tidbit of information. That's, I will. So I like I, a double a double knee bender turn. What in you, the hell? You don't lift your front foot but the back foot stays constantly up and they're angulated at like a 45 on a single board and they allow it, they allow them at Alta. Um, Unreal. Seriously. Anyway, yeah, it's, it's a, a small, but growing community. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, this is amazing. I've, yeah, I'll, I'll leave you with that. But uh, anyways, man, thanks for coming on and spending the time and, and uh, hope to see you out here this winter. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me on. This was great. I mean, I can talk about skiing all day. Oh, it's I know. We might have to. You might be a repeat customer, dude. I mean, as, as you uh, as you delve into your second and third day, we'll uh, we'll get you back, or maybe after a powder turn, and then we'll yeah, we'll bring maybe you. Maybe after a, a powder turn and a handful of ibuprofen, I can come back. <laughs> I love it, dude. All right, brother. Good luck and and success in all your riding, man. And and uh, look forward to talking to you again. Thanks so much. That was awesome. Super grateful that Patty decided to come on. <laughs> it was fun. It's been a fun little go back and forth. When his piece came out, I got to do that podcast. Uh, and uh, I like that we're poking a little fun back and forth. I think all of, everyone out there in the snow world needs to ease up a little bit. And uh, for those of you that were, Patty's a nice guy. I mean, you can tell. We had a good conversation. He's a good dude. Uh, for those of you that are sending hopefully it's not people listening to the podcast, but there was some pretty heinous stuff that people were sending to, to the DMS and trolling them on the old, the old Instagram. So I just hope people do better. Uh, we're, you know, we're all in this together. We're all sliding on snow. And, uh, you know, of course I'm going to tell Patty O'Connell that, you know, the telemark turns the best turn, but, uh, but we're all, we're all friends out there and we should hopefully all be enjoying it. So, I'm really grateful that he came on. Super cool story. I always like talking to other people in, in the snow world, you know, that kind of just picked up, moved to a mountain town and and started their own thing. And I wish him all the best in his writing and, and his gig work. And uh, be sure to check it out. I'm sure you, if you haven't seen it, there's, like we said, there's some videos out there. He's uh, producing content for a bunch of different people. So hopefully you'll check it out. And, uh, yeah, before I take off today, like always, I always like to encourage people to sign up for the mailing list. The link is in the show notes. That's a great way to keep up with us every week. Now that the shop's firing, uh, that's a great way to get content from telemarkskier.com, kind of all in one place in your email. You don't necessarily have to be on the social media to know what's going on and keeps you in touch. 
keeps you part of the family. So please check that out. As always, we'd like to be your preferred Telemark shop. We want to be the, the best one out there and get you all the information and share our expertise and answer your questions. So shop with us at freehilllife.com or come by the shop and see us in Salt Lake City. We would love to meet you, chat with you, and uh, of course, make you a Free Hill Lifer. As far as telemarkskier.com goes, you can get articles, gear reviews, and more. Please consider becoming a premium subscriber for some of our great premium content, gear reviews, our sips and tips program, and much, much more. Uh, if you're just browsing around, you can always go check it out and get the news. Uh, there's a, a forum there as well, and you can communicate with other Telemark skiers from all over the place. We would love to see you there. If you have questions, comments, or anything, hit me up, podcast at freehealllife.com. Psyched as always. And like I said, it's great that it's winter and we're seeing some white on top of the mountains. And until next week, I'm going to pray for more snow. I hope you'll do the same. And of course, spread telemark always, my friends. Peace out.